So uh, here's us flying a kite. Uh, I'll get a little bit into kites because I went a little faster than I thought I would. Uh, kites are a great way to generate power because with kites, everything in the system is intentional. Meaning we can take advantage of these high, high tensile strength nanofibers. Uh, right now we use ultra high molecular weight polyethylene uh, spectra dyneema. And those fibers are incredibly strong and incredibly resilient. For instance, a tether, the diameter of my pinky can handle 70,000 pounds. Uh, this allows us to completely redesign the way we harness wind energy. Uh, with traditional turbine, they're limited by the swept area of the turbine blades for the amount of power they can generate. Our kites can sweep across a much larger area and harness a much larger amount of kinetic energy. And, uh, and the way it works is by reciprocating the tension. So it's the difference in tension between when the kite is sweeping across the wind window and when it stalls and we retract it. And that's kind of the cycle. Data. That's how we generate these, these big power surges. The goal is to replace 20 horsepower diesel engines. Uh, I don't need to show you a hockey stick, uh, but in, uh, in the US, those engines are not commonly used but in the developing world, especially in India and Latin America. Millions of these diesel engines currently <coughs> sitting idle and uh, not able to pump the water that they need for irrigation and water supply. So we hope that we can, uh, for a very low capital cost, come in and replace those diesel engines be the prime mover, actually tied directly into our current uh, water pumps and systems, and uh, help replace the diesel engines, which now cost four times as much to operate as they did three years ago. So uh, that's Windlift, the Windlift Titan Engine Company. We'll take your questions. Yeah. What elevation is uh, optimal for your Well, uh, the higher we go, the more power we generate, but you also at complexity and uh, uh, failure mode is much more dramatic. <laughs> so right now we operate about 75 to 100 meter lines. And uh, that seems to be a, a good limit for us because we, kinda, we don't operate at, right up here. We kind of operate down uh, where the most power is generated. So it doesn't give us, we want to get above kind of the boundary layer, just like a traditional wind turbine, you know, 100 feet, 150 feet. But any higher than that, Cost uh, starts to go up, and then those challenges, engineering challenges, also. Yep. Minimum wind velocity to make it work, and, and what percent of the time would it work in a, in an average location? There is no average location. The kite falls out of the sky at around four or five miles an hour. Uh, the, the system will retract the kite and put it away. So it's something that would be more intermittent for irrigation, where you only need power for, you know. A couple hours every two or three days. So we're not really looking to replace real electric right now. Uh, as you know, in certain locations, yeah, you have, you know, like in North Carolina, for instance, the wind is pretty steady and constant, and uh, we could theoretically, you know, tie into a grid situation. But for most locations, especially for the inland, we're kind of limited to applications where the power demands it. We really have an energy storage problem because we can generate. I mean, for instance, a 10 kilowatt small wind turbine. About eighty thousand uh, dollars. Those prices are going up a lot. It's the price of steel and concrete go up in commodities. Uh, we can generate the same amount of power we think for you know, under five thousand dollars. So it's just a it's a total dramatic change in the, in the cost structure. And there are challenges to reach that. I and mean, it's not a perfect replacement by any means. But we think that because we're over you know, an order of magnitude less expensive, we can have a lot of more uh, Yeah. Uh, does the kite start automatically? Do you need, uh, it needs to be launched automatically. There's a, it's, it's, we can add these kind of features. We can launch it automatically, but it adds cost. And for the markets that we're looking at, the cost of labor doesn't justify uh, adding these rod robotics. Uh, there's a company in Germany called Sky Sales that is using kites to pull tankers. And for their case, the cost of labor is very expensive on a ship. So they are fully automated, but their systems for a I think it's like a 200 kilowatt kite would, I think they're like $750,000. Most of that expense is for the automation system.